try to make this sermon as brief as I can. Not that I would like to. Jeez, Pastor, you disappeared for one, then you're going to hurry up the sermon. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. I will make sure that you hear me clearly. And we are still talking and tackling the how to be blessed at work. How many are workers here? You have a job. Can I see the hands, please? Okay, you're just going to raise your hand. Don't... Don't make it such a big task, okay? How many are workers here? Raise your hands. This message is for you, and today, get ready to be blessed, okay? You're going to be blessed beyond, beyond the curse. That's true. Out of your socks, baby. Look at your neighbor and say, out of your socks, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons why God is emphasizing this is because he's ready to promote this church into the next level. And God said, sure, I am aware. How many would like to have uh, unlimited vacations here? Hallelujah. Uh, It's it. You guys, listen. I I know what it is to work. Yeah? I know. Hallelujah. And sometimes you say, oh, I wish I could go to this place and that. Stop wishing. Start having. Yeah? In the name of Jesus. I used to be a victim of I wish, I wish. And all I got was wishbone. Hallelujah. Never got the solid back. Okay. And you need to have a solid back. That God is going to create now. Through his word. And is going to give it to you. And stop trying to say, I don't know. That's for others. Uh, If others happen to be human being like you. Then yes, it's for you. As well. Yeah. So, okay, God, God is not a respecter of any person. He loves you as much as I, he loves me and everybody else in this planet. Okay, I'm no better or more special than you are. I am the same like you. I go to the toilet. Okay. People didn't get it. Hallelujah. I remember my father saying to me, that's why I, I got the full confidence. He looked at me and said, why, why be afraid of people, Bobby? He said, at the end of the day, don't forget, we all go to the toilet, okay? And he was correct, including the Queen of England who just passed away, okay? We all do. We're all people at the end of the day. I'm not being sarcastic about it. I'm being practical. I'm simply saying, if God who made them, who also made us, He's always loving and after us, and passionately so. Now, listen, would he die for you if you were not special? Would he? And I remember God saying to me, Bobby, I'd like you to know this. It wasn't just a hearsay or uh, an old cliche. He said, even for one person, Bobby, unsaved. I was willing to go to the cross. Even for one. You know, I just got back from Israel. I think it's, I was a newbie. I was a first timer. We went to the stations of the cross. Guys, it wasn't funny. I was just walking. I was complaining. I realized Jesus had a cross. And I said, Bobby, where are you complaining? I said, stop. Guys, I'm not joking. It's super hot. I'm not joking. It was super hot. And it was a long, long walk. Imagine the Via Dolorosa. Jesus walking through it. And it was up, down, up, down. And I was going, so when will this end? When the seventh station is finished. Seven stations of the cross. And Jesus willing to go through it. And then I went to the sepulcher, the burial site of Jesus. And there are two of them by the one, (laughs) by the way. One by, I don't know who's claiming, and the other one by the British. (laughs) So people running it. And I believe it was the real one. I, well, I saw something. Did you see this? I, (laughs) 
Next week, I'll try to bring the other one, which is more elaborate, and you will see the skull. You remember when Jesus was crucified? Apparently, where he was crucified was very near where he was buried. Brand new, super, super expensive burial place given by Joseph of Ari Mathea. And I saw all of them, and it, guys, it's very touching that it really happened there. So why am I telling you this again? What was the reason? <laughs> okay, let's go back to work, okay? So anyway, I want you to all to know that what God... Oh, yeah, yeah, because I want you all to understand. The Lord was saying to me, if they will claim listening on this message today, and they will do what the Word says, God said, next year, 2023, look at your neighbor and say 2023, remember... <laughs> You can go anywhere you would like to go on your vacation, okay? God will enable you. He will give you the money. You ready? But before receiving the money, receive the word first, yeah? When you got God, you got the whole world, baby, okay? If you understand what I'm talking about, okay? So, uh, moving along. It, the passage for today, you know I've given you the background of this last uh, time. And it was, skilled workers are always in demand. It was God's word who said that. And it says, they don't, they are not just in demand, they are admired. Not just by the employers, but by the co-workers as well. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you. So stop saying, um, oh, I know people, you know. You know you, and God is saying this is you, if you will obey, okay? They are admired at the same time, apart from being demanded uh, or in high demand. They also don't take a back seat to anyone. You will never see them in the background. They're always in front. Remember what I said to you, that we are like cream, the creme de la creme of God. You know, how many drink your coffee here? Now listen to me. You know it's true. Yeah? Pour the cream there. Did you notice that? It goes at the bottom, but as quickly it rises up. That's us. We may start at the bottom, but God knows how to promote us. Because you don't own you. Look at your neighbor and say, you don't own you. <sighs> okay. Jesus owns you, okay? So today, the passage I'm giving you is this. Guys, I'm trying to make this as lively as possible so that you will remember it, okay? It, I don't want to sound macabre when I am teaching the Word of God. This is not a funeral. I want you to rejoice when you're receiving the Word of God. Because if you receive the Word of God with such delight, you don't forget it. Okay, remember when you have a comedian speaking and ever saying it was so funny, you don't forget and you keep repeating it. Yeah, this is far better than that. Okay, because this is life. So, uh, Proverbs 13 4 it says, Hard work, no matter how much you want, laziness won't help a bit. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't forget that. Okay. But hard work will reward you with more than enough. Do you understand me now when I said to you, if you pay attention to this right now, next year, grand holidays for you. Okay? And I want to go on holidays when you have unlimited cash to spend. Yeah? Not only you're thinking of what can I get, what can I buy, you're thinking of what do I give to the whole church? Yeah? Hey, can I give you cheese, miss? I didn't know that the whole of Europe was observing our group. The mis How many were missionaries there with me this year, uh, last month? You want to hear the report? Oh, glory to God. They said, we haven't seen anybody as blessed, as prosperous, as powerful, and as miraculous. And I, and I said, you're talking about the group I brought here? <laughs> I was just joking. 
Of course, what I said, of course, like pastor, <laughs> like people. Like, and I know, I know what happened was, no, no, they are, they're being sins. By the way, I forgot to tell you. Remember the uh, pastor? We were meant to minister in hmm, the name of it again. Uh, it's a country in Belgium, in Brussels. And then they could not because the pastor's husband, uh, two months before we arrived, uh, had uh, stage four cancer and they had to remove the tumor or something like that. It was really super cancerous. And then I'd like you to know, how many did we bring with us? We have two, two people, if I'm not mistaken. And then we had a Bible study and the rest of you were just watching in the, the Zoom, right? I want you to hear that pastor today. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He's up on his feet and he's driving. <laughs> When in fact the diagnosis, you saw, we saw him, right? We saw, he, he was in Zoom and he was in his hospital bed and he just had an operation looking, you know, when they look pathetic and everything, started looking like that and uh, highly <laughs> motive, <laughs> not motivated at all to live. Thank you, Jesus. And he, he was, you know, that was his case. And he was looking at the camera and all these things. I want you to know that man, the Lord healed. And we were, we were having the Bible study in the house of the wife of the, one of the parliamentarians of, uh, of EU. And, uh, and oh, they were all rejoicing. And then she said, she was the one who reported it to me. She said, Pastor, they couldn't wait for your group to come back. They were regretting it. They, the, some of them did not join the Friday Zoom. They said, but they wanted it to be in the church. And I said, oh, we have next time. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Jesus. How many are ready to join me? Yeah. Uh, you don't raise your hand. You're not going. How many would like to join us okay, next week? Because it's going to be a better one. Because my plan is to take you to Israel. Yeah. God made me meet a man out of this strange arrangement with his wife um, during the Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the new year of the Jews, okay? Well, I didn't know it was, but I was invited and I was doing the studies. Remember the uh, uh, book of Revelation? I was trying to be studious and everything and God said, Oi, <laughs> there's a call coming. And I said, um, what is it? And he said, it's an invitation. So dinner, come, and I, know, and I had to travel, and I had to pay for it, the taxi. And so I said, I had to pay for, I think something like uh, the, the 200 something I paid, okay, for the taxi alone. So I said, uh, <laughs> nice invitation, I'm the one who's going to pay for everything, okay. So I went, and I said, okay, I'm going, God, I'm going, I'm going. Guys, the taxi driver got born again. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> He got born again. Even for that alone, it was worth the trip. Yeah. And then I'm all, I'm only starting. Okay, I'm only starting. That evening during the Rosh Hashanah celebration, the the guests came, and this guy is uh, from the family of uh, they were the original diamond dealers of Israel. They distribute diamonds to all to different parts of the world. And he was there. And we got to talk. We had dinner and, and he was loud. And we were, and all those things. And so whatever, Lord, let's have a good time, God. You know, I was eating as much as I could. <laughs> and I could not even, because it, it's, it's a different food. So, yay. I was trying to say, come on, Bobby, come on, come on. So, and then finally the moment came. God asked me to give my testimony. Guys, he was so fixated in everything that was being disclosed to him. He was paying attention. Then at the end of our conversation, he took my hand, okay? And he said, Pastor, I want you to know this. This is a Jewish guy, through and through. I want you to know this. He said, every hole in your body is exuding the presence of God. Shh, not yet. So he said, he said, 
you are the present Moses. <laughs> Very cute, okay? You are the present Moses, and he said it, plus King David at the same time. I said, oh, come, come on, say more, please. I, went, oh, I felt like saying that. But I don't know. But I, I looked at him and I said, sir, praise God for that. He said, I want you to know this. He said, if this is not ho holiday right now, you know how conservative they are. So I'm going straight to the bank and get a lot of money and give them to you. And I look at him and I said, sir, I'm so sorry. I don't need money. And there is he. This is what I'm talking about. You don't need money. <laughs> Because God provides it. Anyway, so anyway, I, I look at him and I said, I don't. But I said, you know what I'm so happy about is God made this evening possible for us to share and get to know each other. And he said, promise me, Pastor, come back and live in my house. I, look, I nearly look at him and say, how long for? So, <laughs> so I, I went, okay, thank you. And all these things, okay. And... Um, that's it. Can I move to the subject matter again? <laughs> so you guys saw this, okay? You saw this, how God is saying to you and to me, I am interested to promote you. It doesn't matter where you are. You are the best. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you're the best. Amen. Now you know why I'm so confident, ladies and gentlemen, plus whoever else, okay? The only reason why I'm so confident is because I know who lives in you. If I know Jesus doesn't live in you, I, won't, I don't have any right to say this. I'm just imagining things. But the fact that he lives in you, just don't be lazy. Okay? You have all the trappings of a great, successful person. Don't you ever forget that. It's in you. It's in your DNA. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, new DNA sets in. In your system. So that's the very key I'm going to give you today. Hard work. Look at your neighbor and say, hard work. Hard work will reward you with more than enough. Ask any employer. I've been an employer of many businesses. And I promise you, I was always desperately looking for good workers. But it's not just looking for a good worker. But how do you get to keep a good worker? was my concern and I knew the only way I could keep them is by giving them prosperity they look for the rewards financial rewards nine times out of ten of course I give them um, encouragements you know praises and you name it I shower them with art but that being said and I appreciate them but the best part all the time is your boss will panic to bless you. How many would like that to happen in your work right now? Because you heard this message today and because God is sealing it with his own blood and he signed it. Signed, sealed, delivered. He's yours. You got it. Okay. Pastor, how come you're mentioning too many songs? And Because life is poetic. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. And don't blame me. Blame God, okay? So, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. In, oh, this is interesting. Proverbs 10, 4. I want you to mark this. I'll try to do this as quickly as I could. Uh, Proverbs 10, 4 says, laziness leads to poverty. I'm going to ask everybody in this group, how many are lazy here and don't raise your hands? Okay. But this is for you. You want to be poor? Be lazy. <laughs> Are you ready for the next part? Which is a better one. A better deal. Hard work makes you rich. So how many are ready to work hard here? Look at your neighbor and say, you're rich. Yeah, you're rich. You're going to be rich. You'll be rich. You have no other course but to get rich. Okay? But I will, we'll have a balance in a moment. Okay? So let's move along. Thank you, Jesus. 
you know, in fact, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I've got an anointing that I'm going to pass on to you. If God knows you're not lazy, what he's going to reward you now as we speak. Is less work for more money. Look at me, Cassandra. Tell me I'm lying. Less work for more money because you're invaluable. It's like God, isn't it? He says very little, but a lot of things happen. He said, let there be light. Kaboom. How long did it take him to say, let there be light? The whole universe collided and created exactly what is he saying. When he speaks like he's speaking to us right now, your whole world is colliding. Something is happening. And it's not short of a miracle. Because it's God. Stop looking at your end. Evaluating yourself with your limited senses. See, that's our problem. We think we are the ones that will fulfill it. Little did we know it's already in it. It's in you. All you have to do is just say, manifest. Okay, can I give you something simple? Yeah. So anyway, they announced it. Guys, we were 400 delegates. There were almost like 20 buses, humongous buses. Imagine mobilizing people all the time. And so when, they, when it was time to go home, John, they said, uh, your schedule, we were bus number four. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And what's the meaning of that? Bus number four is leaving seven o'clock in the morning, and our flight is not until five in the afternoon. What in the name? <laughs> you want me to wait that? That long? And the pastor's wife, Juvie, how many have met Juvie, Pastor Ed's wife? Hey, Juvie's birthday was going to be that day. And so I attended the meeting and I was roaming around the usual me. And suddenly I heard the voice. Of, See, this is the advantage when you're talking to God all the time. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what he will unveil to you. You got it? Yeah. So I, I look at the person and I said, you're the overall head, the overall organizer of all the trips we were doing. She said, yes, I am the representative of Sar 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 or something like that. So I said, uh, one of the biggest in the whole of Israel. It's called Sar Ed Tours and everything. So I said, so you were the one who organized all of us? I said, I am in bus number four. And she looked at me, she said, okay, and said, oh, yeah, your bus is, she went like this, your bus is leaving at 7 o'clock. And I said, I know, except that I have a problem. I said, and the problem is, pay attention. I said, we're leaving 7 o'clock? Flight not until 5 something? I said, have mercy. And I said, come on, the pastor's wife is celebrating her birthday tomorrow. We have to get up and all this. She said, you know what, sir, let me see what I could do. So I said, I saw something like number five there. I said, oh, yeah. yeah. And she said, oh, there are only 32. There's about 50 plus capacity, 32. And I said, yeah, how many of you? I said, miss, I'm so sorry, I have to ask permission. I wanted to tell the pastor first before I do it. So I came back. And I, so I went to the pastor. And the pastor said, that's God. And I said, I know, huh? So anyway, so, so she said, pastor, that's God and all this. And I said, so can, can I book for the three of us? And I said, but you cannot tell the rest. Because, guys, I don't know whether they can accommodate the rest, right? So he, he, he said, uh, yeah, okay, I'll keep my mouth shut. So keep my mouth shut. Thank you, Jesus. How many could more or less figure out what happened? Okay. So I, I told the woman, and she said, sure. I'll have. And on the spot, she changed it, plus three. I said, wow. See, when you're listening to God, 
because you're not lazy and listening, yeah, and obeying. So anyway, she said, so here we go. That evening we were having dinner. So they're all going to get ready to fix everything early so that they could leave early. And they all look at me from one table to our table. They said, and pastor, what time are you leaving? Like they don't know. <laughs> We're on the same bus, and I knew it was God. And God said, what are you going to do now, lie? <laughs> you know, the Bruce, the Almighty, like, I can't lie, <laughs> type of thing. I, I felt like saying that. So I <laughs> went, uh, I said, 11? Um, and they said, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I look at them, and I said, I spoke to the organizer. But I said, I wasn't so sure. I said, but you know what? You can try. Guys, as we were speaking, I said, how many of you anyway? They said 11. So I had that figure, 35 plus 11. So it's still not quite 50, right? So I, I look at them and I said, I, if God would permit it. Were, guys, as we were speaking, the organizer passed through. And he said, hey! They all went to her like that. Ah, what? And, 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 and she said, the pastor, by the way. And she looked at me like, <laughs> you again? <laughs> I said, yeah. Apparently, I can't lie. Yeah. So anyway, and she, she said, oh, wait, hold on a minute. And guys, long story short, they were all left through. <laughs> Not the end yet. Okay, there's more to it. But wait, you know, type of thing. So what happened was, the following day, we were all ready. We had wonderful breakfast, comfortably prepared and whatnot. And all of a sudden, the Lord was saying to me, I said, Pastor, are you going to pray? And I said, yeah, I will. But you know when God speaks to you, and it is such a strong message, your God is feeling... Uh. And I said, okay, I know you're talking. And God said, you know how much... They went shopping, Bobby, and I said, <laughs> don't I have eyes? They shopping galore for the parishion because a lot of them were first-timers. You know the feeling, really, when you're a first-timer and you're shopping souvenirs and whatnot. And God said, S majority of that, if not all of them, is that they have extra baggage, just goods. And God said, stand before me and ask me to make all their baggage free of charge and I went okay <laughs> you know when it's not happening yet and you go how many have done that in your faith like yeah but inside of you it's like how oh. you know like oh. you don't talk about right all you have to do is look at your wife that's it so I was like how oh. so, I was talking to the PJ AJ, I should say. So anyway, I, I look at I look at the wife. I, I, I look at the whole thing, and I said, guys, the Lord is asking me for us to pray right now. And so when we prayed, and I said, and not one baggage will be charged. And guys, that's exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. And it only happened to the people within the circle of the prayer. The rest were charged. I said, what? But that's God. When God, who loves us passionately and desperately, would like to bless us, who's going to stand in his way? Not even you. But you saw the secret. The Lord is saying, laziness will bring about poverty as much as diligence in your work. It will make you rich if you're hardworking. Diligence means being self-disciplined. You don't have to write this down. Try to remember it, homie. That means you're motivated. That means you're alert. Nothing is worse than a worker who's not alert. How many would agree with me? If you want to know, just look at your spouse when they're not alert. <laughs> and you're telling them important things. I'm 
I'm, no, I'm not popular right now for all I care. <laughs> Dependable. That's the meaning of it as well. Being diligent. Following through on something when you start it. A lot of people, this is the problem with many Christians, they're good only in starting. But in the middle, they fall. How would you like to rely to, on people like that? Who would rely on you? If you're a wishy-washy person, a worker, you're reliable now, but three days from now, you're not. How many are dishonest people in your company. <laughs> the Lord is just saying to me. When you work. Our problem is we work for ourselves. Reverse it. Let's change the order. Work for God. Even if you're doing it for yourself. Even if you're doing it for your family and everything. Do it for God. I promise you. It will be much lighter. Then work becomes play. Enjoyable. As it were. And it is priceless because it's so hard to find um, people like that. Okay? You'll find this. Which passage was that again? Can you do Proverbs 12, 27? We, I think we skipped that. Lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting. In short, he steals. That's not God. A lot of people that I've encountered, and they say, well, then why did you steal? They look at me and they said, oh, because nobody's watching, Pastor. Well, at least they were honest. <laughs> and I said, except you fail something, and that is, you fail to remember that Jesus was watching you. The biggest audience you have. And I know you're listening to me. I know the wheels are turning. But diligence is man's precious possession. Being diligent all the time. I already defined it for you disciplined and everything. The Bible teaches that your boss is responsible to pay you a fair day's wage. And you are responsible to give them a fair day's work. And you heard me clearly. The story is told of a guy who went for a job interview and was asked if he was responsible. You want to hear his answer? He said, yeah, I am responsible. Every time something went wrong on my last job, the boss said I was responsible. <laughs> How many have heard of that one? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When I when I remember that, I said, oh, yeah, that one is good. Let's include that in the sermon. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, yes, every time something went wrong, he was responsible. So, but seriously, though, you don't want... Um, you wouldn't want promotion to just pass you. I'm going to ask you the question again. Do you really want to prosper, guys? Do you? Do you? I'll ask you on this side. Do you want to prosper? No, no clapping, John. That's a bit unfair. Okay. Do you want to prosper? Remember, God heard you. And what about you here? Do you want to prosper? Then, hey. We have new prosperous group of people here. We, we are, hey, hallelujah. You're going to prosper. We're going to prosper. Hallelujah. Um, 
I just need to give you some points here before I leave this subject matter. Hard work, not politics, and manipulation will get you promoted because some people are suckers to their boss. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying, yeah? Work hard and you will be a leader. Remember what I said to you? You're like a cream. You pour it under, uh, in, in your coffee. It rises so quickly. Oh, there again. You cannot keep it down there. You're too valuable. You're delicious, baby. <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> it's true. Hallelujah. Work hard and you will be a leader. Be lazy and you will end up a slave. And if you think I'm just making up that phrase, why don't you check Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. Did you see it? Work hard, you'll be a leader. Be lazy, you will end up a slave. Lazy employees complain about things like unfair bosses, systems that are stacked against them. And company men who ingratiate, sorry, ingratiated themselves with bosses who take care of them. It doesn't move me. I remember working in a company like that, where they have cliques, for all I care, okay? Because what they have failed to completely attach themselves to is the true author of promotion, who is my God, <laughs> the owner of the company. I always tell God, I remember when I was working for a company, I always tell God, I work for you. You own this company. This company belongs to my daddy. He will do as he please. And the owner has no choice. Uh, in closing, guys, I wanted to give you more, but let me close, okay? By saying, the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied, God said. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Proverbs 13, verse 4. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, meaning to, to say they're always longing. Remember what I said to you earlier, earlier on? They only have, I wish, I wish, I wish, and they end up with a wishbone. Versus people who are diligent, the word of God says, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Next year, if your dream is for God to take you to different vacations so you could be a blessing, then so be it. Amen. And come home with a lot of pressies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, they told me what they like so much about our group. They said, you guys are a bunch of givers. Oh, wow. Sickeningly givers. <laughs> How would you like that? <laughs> if your attitude continues to be like, what's in it for me? Or I'm only in this for the money. You're pathetic. You are the biggest candidate for demotion. But if your attitude is reversed, you will start looking at the whole company and say, what can I do for you? How can I bless you? Because when they get blessed, you get blessed. In fact, if they knew that they were blessed because of you, more than anyone else, you're the one who's going to get the biggest raise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to get the biggest race this year. Hey, the biggest. The biggest. And your boss will not even understand, why am I giving you this big race? Uh, where, where, is, where is that sister? Uh, no, she's there. Come here. Come up. Come up. Come up. Imagine she became the worker of the month. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh. 
she, she got the biggest shock around and said, me? <sighs> yes, you. And if you want more of that, keep doing it, okay? Don't work to impress people. Work to impress your God. Yeah? Because he's the biggest rewarder. Sis, you will keep having it. Keep harvest. Next year, you're coming with us, okay? So, um, in final closing, this is the third time, okay? So, it's really closing. This time. Let me just say... I want you all to know the word of God says they get it all. The passage we just read. The satisfaction of a job well done. A sense of self-worth. Because I studied. Uh, when I was doing my MBA in, in England at that time. I remember how we were made to memorize the hierarchy of the needs. Remember the Pareto one. How many are familiar with that? Okay. So thank you Jesus. So... Uh, how it, it needed to be really satisfied in all this. God said, I'll get that all covered for you if you do this. Can you bring it up again? If you do that. Again, you get it all. The satisfaction of a job well done. A sense of self-worth. A reputation for integrity. The trust of others. Remember what I said to you. Don't try to impress your boss. Impress God. And everybody else will be impressed. And then you got your job security as well. And then profit, promotion, and most importantly, ah, oh, this is the one that I always count on. When God looks at me and he says, well done, Bobby. And I goes, mm. it tickles me. How many would like to be tickled by God? <laughs> by God's goodness. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, maybe God's fingers as well. Okay, so, so, okay, guys, let's all stand up. I think I spoke too much already. Okay, so. Father, I delivered it as much as I could. As practicable. At the same time as you would like me to. But I, again, once more, I give you back the glory all the time, Jesus. Lord, you were the one who spoke to them. And because I'm confident of that, I know no word of yours will return to you void. But as you send it forth, it will bring about results. Bumper crop harvest in their lives. And their fruit shall remain. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Guys, um, just very quickly, you may be seated, okay? I just want to show you something. What happened was they gave, something happened to our group when I didn't know that we were put in the Palestinian side of Israel but we were oh yeah I see all the faces <laughs> yeah well when you're there you're there and the, one of the reasons is that apparently it's very economical you have to understand that these are pastors from all over the world uh, all over the world 400 delegates and they chose me to be one of the keynote speakers. And <laughs> they gave me the most difficult assignment. Washing of the feet. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so what happened was, uh, I remember going there ahead of everyone for the keynote speakers. They wanted you to be there, preparation and whatnot. And I saw a humongous place prepared and everything. The following day, locked down by the minister of internal affairs of the Palestinian government because somebody left irresponsibly the star of David on the stage and this was in the CNN we became news <laughs> my first time thank you Jesus and then they also put the menorah and why was that because they, they What's the celebration again? Rosh Sh no, Rosh Hashanah is New Year. The, the one before that. And what's that? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so, so anyway. Meno, Meno. That's April. So anyway, uh, the thing was, thank you anyway for trying. Uh, it's, you know, when they make sh makeshift houses? Yeah, Sukkot. Sukkot. 
Look at your neighbor and say, it's not Sukkot. It's not Sukkot in Visayas to charge somebody, okay? So anyway, and I speak Visayas. So and Sukkot. Look at your neighbor and say Sukkot, okay? So, so anyway, somebody. So they thought they were just celebrating with the Israelites. Guys, you are on the Palestinian side. So somebody took a picture, put in the media, spread like fire, and somebody attacked. One of the militants came in and fired, they said. But we didn't hear anything, and we are safe. Anyway, so guess what happened? The only possible topic that's going to happen was my topic. They shut down the conference in the... Oh my gosh, man, I, 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 I'm telling you right now. So anyway, I had no idea. I said, oh, I, I'm, I'm on? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm not supposed to be on until two or three days, okay? So I said, okay, I'm, I'm on, whatever. But guys, this is not going to be easy because it's in the Dead Sea. Look at your neighbor and say, Dead Sea. You know what's Dead Sea? The lowest part of Israel. No living thing exists. And that thing. Because it's super salty. And all this. <laughs> they decided they would choose 3 o'clock in the afternoon. When the sun was beating on us. And there was no tent. And I have hundreds of people in front of me. And I was in the middle. The intensity of the heat. And I did not know when the sun is beating like that. And the... Salt is evaporating. Guys, 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 I'm not joking you. I was choking every second. Like every time you read, salt, 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 okay? <laughs> and I was preaching. They said, 30 minutes. I was onto it five minutes. I said, I can't take this anymore. I had my, this is the coach. I had the Louis Vuitton one, okay? I had it on and all these things. I threw everything on the floor. Next thing I knew, four people picking up my stuff. <laughs> they said, Pastor, it's not good because the salt is too strong. It will damage your Louis Vuitton. So anyway, <laughs> so I said, I don't care, okay? I felt, I felt like becoming a <laughs> private dancer, okay? I said, let me copy John the Baptist here. <laughs> so anyway, I felt like saying, guys, I'm not joking. It was stifling. And the heat was compounding. And you know me about heat. Come on. So the 30 minutes came down. I preached for less than 10 minutes. Okay. You wish today I would do it. Huh? And so anyway, I said, <laughs> glory to Jesus. And I went, I don't know how many feet I was supposed to wash. I said, May I call on the pastors? And they all said, they said, I want you to pile up here. All of a sudden, there were so many pastors in front of me. He said, and you're going to wash the feet of your congregants. <laughs> and I disappeared. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even wash one feet. Oh, one set of feet, I just say. I didn't even wash my own feet. Hallelujah. So I was saying to myself, this is the end of me. Okay, I will never be invited again. <laughs> Guys, the reason why I'm asking you to listen is because at the end of everything, they not only gave me, and they're not rich organization, because this organization doesn't ask for membership fees or things like that. Everything is by faith. And imagine they gave me money. And awarded me to be one of the most valuable speakers. <laughs> Employee of the month. Eh?
try to read it. It said, for, the, <laughs> for delivering the message. <laughs> <laughs> delivering the message of the Lord to his people. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He didn't say in, in the Dead Sea, okay? So, or um, on the Dead Sea. In love, wisdom, and power. During the IAFB Europe uh, 10th year convention and blah, 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 blah. I, I shouldn't be saying that, guys, okay? So, but I, uh, I said, me? I, 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 John, I'm not j joking. Everybody look at me like, I mean, I said, me? We're going to receive money? And they also gave me the money, and I went, oh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, so in short, what I'm saying to you guys is it doesn't matter if you're willing and obedient. You will get the best of the land. And in closing, just raise your hands right now and I'm going to pray for you. Father, these are all believers of your word. Not hearers only. They're doers. And they would like to apply your word. Because they know you don't fail. All else will fail, but not you. Because of who you are and what you are. Thank you, Lord, for making all of us obedient to the call. Thank you also for promoting everybody, especially the workers who heard the message today. Lord, they're your top guns, I repeat. They're your top guns. They're not ordinary. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Amen. We have a program, by the way. <laughs> mm, okay. I'll be quick. Can you call on the children, please? I just want to share with you quickly. I didn't know Pastor is going to teach about this today. I received this message on the twin. Yeah, the 20th of October at 1.25 a.m. I had a vision and God said, God is tilting the big pot to pour out his financial blessings and favors. This is for IFGC, okay? I'm just letting you know. Are you excited about that? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, are you excited? And then I had this vision of three pots that represent the floodgates of heaven and God is going to start tilting it I saw it tilting in fact the other one is being poured out already and then this is what he promised he said faithful tithers you will receive double portion in your income bonuses and promotion okay Receive that and be faithful, okay? Don't steal from God. Make sure you're always faithful in everything that you do. Amen? Praise God.